Hello, how are you doing? You know, one of the reasons I love reading new books and new publications is that every once in a while I'll come across a really exciting new fresh voice that in its content or its style is able to say something about our current times, our society, about the human condition that hasn't been articulated in that way before and it really feels like you know this is a fresh new voice uh, that might publish lots more books and uh, might be read in decades or even centuries to come in how they're articulating our current times, you know, that we're currently living through. And uh, so, of course, there's a book award that I love to follow uh, called the Sunday Times Young Writer of the Year Award. And just recently, they announced their shortlist for their 2021 prize, um, which I think was has been slightly delayed, um, you know, because of uh, COVID things. And uh, so, so the announcement, they're going to announce the winner on February 24th. And I thought I'd talk through the, the authors and the books that are uh, shortlisted for this prize and because uh, I've only read two of them uh, so far but I'm hoping to read more and yeah I've just always really enjoyed following this prize because they highlighted some really great authors in the past uh, such as like Max Porter and Jay Bernard and Sally Rooney and uh, Zadie Smith and you know authors that have gone on to you know be really major uh, voices in uh, like new publications and um, literature today and so yes these are the five shortlisted books and authors and uh, so there are three novels there's one poetry collection and one book of nonfiction. and I think for all of these authors this is their very first like debut book um, all except for Cal Flynn who has previously um, published a, um, a non-fiction book before Cal Flynn's a, a journalist and and uh, yeah published a, a book about the colonization of Australia yeah. So like I said, yeah, I've read two of them. Uh, one of them I've not really heard of before, Anne Beecher's uh, novel, Here Comes uh, the Miracle, I've yeah, not really come across before, but it sounds really interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go through and talk through each of them. Um, if uh, To be eligible for this prize, the author needs to be between uh, 18 and 35 years old. So I find it slightly terrifying how young some of these authors are, uh, but you know, they're really exciting new voices. So I'd love to know if you've read any of these books, um, if you like agree that they're like a debut author that's worth watching, uh, or if you've come across any other debut authors recently that you think are really strong and uh, yeah, just really exciting new voices, uh, please let me know about that in the comments below. First off, I'm going to talk about the books that I have read before because I feel slightly more knowledgeable about those. Uh, so first off, there's Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, who's a British Ghanaian writer. Uh, from the southeast of London and uh, this is a romance uh, between two uh, young black uh, people living in London and following their experiences. They're both artists, uh, one is a photographer and one is a dancer and you follow um, his perspective of the photographer and it's written in this unique uh, second person voice um, which matches so well with his interest in photography I think because it gives you that sort of of same self-conscious sense of being both like inside and outside of the voice at the the same time you know he's he's speaking to you um, but it, it's a it's a very like intimate voice and it feels like the same experiences you know when we're being photographed you're you're sort of self-conscious of being photographed and thinking about what the photograph will look like but at the same time you're inhabiting your your body and you're being you're, you're so you sort of see it from the outside and the inside at the same time if that makes sense and and yeah and I think that's slightly why he chose to to narrate this in the the second person and it just works so well as you see the development of their relationship which starts off as a friendship and develops more into a romance and is talking about their 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 artistic lives, their ambitions, um, their their scholarly pursuits, and uh, their pursuits in work, and uh, yeah, and just it, it describes that experience of being uh, black and British um, in uh, the country today. And uh, there's a very endearing section where he goes to uh, signing by um, Zadie Smith and, and is talking about the influence of this writer, and uh, yeah, and also uh, going to see the the film If Beale Street Could Talk, and you know, and how this like feeds into 
his experience of being a young black British man. And uh, yeah, just it just it's so poetic um, how it's written as well that it's just the writing is just gorgeous. This book was also the winner of the most recent Costa Book Awards uh, first novel category, which you can see on this uh, stick. Well, it looks like a sticker, but it's actually printed on the, uh, the the paperback of this book. And something quite cool that I hadn't realized before, um, which it uh, notifies you about the, on the inside, is that there's a whole Spotify playlist um, around this novel um, that you can go listen to. So I'm going to have to go check that out. Next is the poetry collection My Darling from the Lions by Rachel Lawn, uh, who is also a Londoner and was born in 1988. And uh, these poems, uh, well, this poetry collection uh, was also uh, shortlisted for the poetry category in the, the Costa Book Awards. And uh, these, these poems describe an individual's experience uh, through a kind of like Im impressionistic means. I mean, some of the, the poems are very grounded in a certain time and place and are slightly more narrative based. Uh, some of the other poems are slightly more abstract, um, describing uh, human experience in, in, a, in a certain way. Uh, one of my favorite poems is called uh, the, the Music Box or The Musical Box, something like that, which describes an object uh, which uh, belonged to uh, the narrator's uh, parent and um, and how there's these, uh, yeah, the musical box, that's what it's called, um, how there's these, you know, physical objects that we grow up around which were part of our parents' lives, you know, before we were around. And so, you know, it's this, this experience of like, it's like a kind of touchstone to the past that has this very special meaning to our parents, but, you know, to us is just a sort of normal object. But then as we grow up with it in our childhoods, it comes to have a special meaning for us as well. And I just think she describes that um, so beautifully. Uh, also, some of the, the poems are quite humorous. Uh, like there's a poem called like The Sharks and Victoria Beckham. Um, so that's they're, they're, they're slightly more humorous and satirical uh, type poetry. And uh, so, but yeah, this is just a, a wonderful debut collection. There's the novel Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan. Uh, and Megan Nolan is an Irish writer that was born in 1990. <laughs> and uh, so this this novel is uh, about a young woman um, that uh, doesn't uh, believe in any particular religion and instead puts all her faith in love and uh, and a romance with a man um, and it's about the the experience of, of what happens if you entirely invest your sense of self-worth into a relationship like this and and I think it's something that a lot of people do and and which uh, is very tricky obviously and causes a, a lot of problems and so it's describing that um, experience um, the the author Catherine Lacey um, calls this novel an anti-romance um, but it's uh, also meant to be quite like darkly funny uh, as well describing that that experience so yeah this is a, a novel I'm hoping to read then there's a novel here Comes the Miracle by Anna Beecher, um, which is a book I've not come across before. Uh, like I said, Anna Beecher uh, was born in 1988, uh, is based in the US, and is also a theater maker. And this novel is about a boy named Joe that when he's a young man, he's uh, d diagnosed uh, with late stage cancer. And uh, it's so it's about the impact on his life and his family and also his grandfather, um, who when his grandfather um, decades earlier, uh, when he was a young man, had a relationship with another man. So it's about these um, two different experiences. One, a, a young man whose uh, life is sort of cut off by this terminal illness, and then uh, a man that's um, who whose life was uh, sort of inhibited uh, by social pressures and uh, so describing that that family experience. It sounds really good. And then finally, there's the author and journalist Cal Flynn, uh, who uh, is from the Highlands of Scotland and uh, who wrote this nonfiction book called Islands of Abandonment, uh, which was uh, also listed for the Bale Gifford Prize, um, which uh, you can see with another one of these uh, sort of marks that looks like a sticker, but it's actually printed on the paperback of this book, uh, which nice, nicely matches my, my top. Uh, lovely purple color, um, but it was also nominated for the Wainwright Prize uh, for Nature Writing, um, which I made a video talking about last year. And this is a book uh, 
about uh, spaces which have been in abandoned um, that are sort of uh, no man's lands, uh, kind of exclusion zones and uh, places which uh, yeah were inhabited but which have now been renatured and uh, so it's about how nature grows back in these spaces after they're abandoned by humans and but also about some uh, you know people that that still live in these spaces um, which you know aren't a community anymore but um, but which are inhabited by by people that are um, quite often more sort of like drifters or, or sort of slightly outside of society so it's describing these these different spaces and um, also in includes a, a number of photographs and pictures so you can see um, some of these spaces as well and uh, so yeah I've this is a book that I've been meaning to get to you for ages and so hoping to read this um, as well soon so like I said the, the winner for this year's prize will be announced on February 24th um, it'll be really interesting to see who wins and like I said I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and would recommend them as well or if you agree with my thoughts of the ones that I've, I've read so far but yeah also if there are any other really exciting new writers that you've come across um, that you think you know this is going to be a really important author in years to come uh, please let me know about that in the, the comments uh, as well so I hope you're doing well and reading good things and having a good weekend and I will speak to you again soon bye bye